Hey everyone, thanks for checking out Everyday Short Stories. Our second show was a show that was about regret. One of the ways I structure the event is by never asking people to tell me about their stories ahead of time. Sometimes really interesting things can happen, like in the case of regret. So, during the regret event, I got up and told a story which is about me being a bully. John, who told the story right after me, told a story about being bullied and seeing that bully many years later. This was a really tough story for me to tell, but uh, I'll let you be the judge, so check it out. Um, and my story of regret that, it, that <clears throat> sticks out the most with me is when I was uh, 16, um, and it was the summer between my sophomore and junior year, I was walking through the park with a friend named John, and John was somebody I'd grown up with, and John had noticed that I started to change a little bit, that um, I was becoming a little more popular in school, that um, I was, you know, getting a little more attention. And J we're walking through the, this park in Columbus, Ohio, and John starts uh, singing the Rolling Stones song, you know, walking through Central Park, um, you know, singing after dark, um, shuffling to my feet, you know, um, and then he says, people think you're crazy, and what's the matter with you, boy? He kept saying that to me. He just kind of had this earwig that he just couldn't get rid of. And we're walking, and, and eventually he turns to me and says, you know, we're now with the upperclassmen in high school, and people are going to kind of look to us. You know, we're going to kind of be a leader. And when I think about being a leader, I want to be a good guy. And John and I were huge comic book nerds, you know, and this was before being a comic nerd was... Uh, popular, you know, and, and socially acceptable. And I always had this idea of, uh, of being a superhero and being the, the guy that everybody looked up to and, you know, was, had some serious morals and, you know, and a good backbone. And, and, and I turned to John and I said, that's a great idea. You know, I want to be that guy that the upper, the, you know, underclassmen can look up to. And so flash forward to school starts, I start hanging out with the, the more popular kids and I really wanted to be accepted. So what did I do? I caved. <laughs> I caved like that. And the second a kid that I decided was a geek or my friends decided was a nerd walked by, I let them have it, you know. And we all tried to get laughs, you know. It was all at the expense of other people. And the more, excuse me, the more I did this, the crappier I felt. But the more I did it, the more my friends laughed. And I was good at it. I could make people fucking cry. I was so fucking mean and so hateful. I just let these kids have it. And the kids that just never deserved it. They were just totally nice kids. They were quiet, maybe. They dressed funny, you know. And I just couldn't stop myself because I was being accepted by the popular kids. So flash forward to college and I'm meeting and hanging out with people who aren't like that, who accepted me for being me, and they liked my sense of humor. And as a matter of fact, they deterred me from being mean, and I appreciated that. And then I started thinking about high school and what a jerk I was in high school. And I realized what I want to do is every day think about this, this time in my life where I was a dickhead to people, and and make myself a better person, and try harder to be that guy that I always think I can be, right, to stand up. So I have this regret, and I hold on to this regret, because it allows me to learn, allows me to grow, allows me to think about, you know, being a better person. So I don't think regret necessarily has to be a horrible thing. And every day I do, I try, I think about it, and I think about being a better person, and I'm, you know, I try really hard and then I get behind the wheel, and I have to drive in L.A. traffic. So that's my story of regret. So thank you. Um, our first storyteller is John M. David, this story is, is for you tonight. <laughs> this is, the, you're going to, I was touched by your story. You'll see why in a minute.
His name was Peter Johnson. He was about 12, 13 years old, as I was at the time. And Peter was the classic quintessential schoolyard bully. Peter considered himself to be superior to anybody that he could push around or humiliate or intimidate or dominate. <clears throat> like, like most bullies, he was mostly talk and bluster. He was always regaling his friends with some elaborate tale of his most recent escapades and conquests. He was very braggadocious. And Peter did have friends. He had people who followed him around and hung out with him, listened to his stories, laughed at his jokes, pretty much went along with everything. Why? Because they knew they were better off being counted among his friends than his victims. They aligned themselves with him because they knew it was better to be the windshield than the bug. And who was I? Of course, I was the bug. I was the guy who was crawling around on his hands and knees picking up the school books that Peter had just knocked out of my hand and kicked up and down the floor of the hallway. I was the guy who walked around the corner in that hallway directly into Peter's fist that had been lying in wait for me around the corner. I was the guy who was held firmly against the wall by Peter's friends, cronies as I preferred to call them, so that Peter could walk up to me in complete safety and pummel me with those fists of his. And such incidents continued mercilessly and consistently on a daily basis for the entire time that I attended Wilton Junior High School. They ended only when the school year ended, summer vacation came, and we all left and went our separate ways for summer vacation. The following year, I started going away to other schools, prep schools, boarding schools. So many years would pass before I would ever again see or hear the name of Peter Johnson. Now, in the years that followed, I did go away to other schools. I traveled to other places. I met new people, made new friends, learned things, got some therapy, uh, became interested in music, picked up the guitar, started playing songs, eventually started writing songs and performing them. And after some 15 years time, behold, the bug was no longer a bug. But I had been miraculously transformed into a now fully independent, confident, self-sufficient, professional musician, singer-songwriter. I commanded respect. I had friends. I even had some fans. Another professional singer-songwriter was Rick McDonald, professional musician. He lived the same county that I did in Connecticut. We shared many of the same friends and fans, played many of the same venues, sometimes even played the same shows together. And we would often spot each other, I in his audience or he in mine. And so it was one particular night Rick and I made eye contact with each other. He from the stage where he was performing to a packed house and I from the center of the room uh, where I was looking for a place to sit. And there was right next to me, there was a large table, a party of about seven people and one empty chair, which they graciously offered to me and I accepted. I turned my chair to face the stage and listened to my friend Rick perform. And as I was listening, I was aware of conversation going on around me. And behind me, there was this one voice in particular, this one conversation. And there was something oddly familiar 
to me about this voice. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but there was just something familiar. This, this guy was regaling the two women sitting on either side of him with some elaborate tale of his recent conquests and escapades. And he was very braggadocious. And there was just something oddly familiar about his voice. And uh, so when my friend Rick took his break, I turned my chair around and faced the table. And I glanced up a few times at this guy who was still talking. And he started glancing up at me the same way. There was something peculiar for, to him about me as well. And finally, he said to me, he said, do I know you from someplace? Have you and I met? And this whole time, I'd been looking at him trying to figure it out. And it finally hit me. And I said, is your name Peter? And he got this kind of half smile on his face. And I said, who are you? Do I, where, do I know you from somewhere? Where do I know you from? What's your name? I, I have a feeling I've met you somewhere before. What, what, who are you? I said, is your name Peter Johnson? I said, this is driving me crazy. Who are you? How do I know you? Where do I know you from? What's your name? And I looked him right in the eye. And I said, my name is John Mollenhauer. And I watched the blood drain out of his face. And he, he became pale. And his whole, his whole form just kind of changed. It was as if someone let some of the air out of him. And he just kind of deflated. And he looked at me and he, he just kept saying, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, John. oh, my God. I can't believe this. Oh, man. I was such a prick to you. Oh, my God. And he turned to the, the woman next to him. He said, I was so mean to this guy. Oh, man, John, I can't believe this. Wow, man, I'm, I am so sorry. I, wow, I, I can't believe this is happening. Can I buy you a beer? And I looked at him and I said, yeah, you can buy me a beer. And that is the story of Peter Johnson's regret. John, that was wonderful. Thank you for doing that. Uh, great story. And the interesting thing about Peter being a bully, I was not a, a physical bully. I was a verbal bully. <laughs> not that, not, and that's much better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, it, I never really had a desire to be physical when I was a bully. I was more of a, uh, I just like to make my friends laugh by being incredibly, you know, mean verbally to people. Uh, and, you know, and like I said, every time I did it, it chipped away at me a little bit. So hopefully some of these people that uh, I was a jerk to <laughs> may watch this and... If you're interested, John is still a musician to this day, and he even has his own website.